There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, BookTube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. I have a book haul. First is a Blame It on Mel of Mel's Bookland Adventures. She personally recommended this to me, and I bought it from Book Depository within 24 hours. Stephen Benatar's Wish Her Safe at Home. And this is an NYRB books book. And I have never heard of Stephen Benatar. Maybe I'd heard his name, but he is a gay novelist. Born in London, 1937. And he lives in Hampstead with his partner, John. I'd never, certainly never heard of the novel, and Mel said it's a Sean book, published in 1982. Its protagonist is Rachel, who is deliriously happy because her great aunt has left her a Georgian mansion in another city. Then we find out what happens after that. So for my book hauls, I like to read the opening line or the opening paragraph if it has some kind of standalone vitality. And the fact that it doesn't, doesn't make me less excited for the book. Some openings have that kind of standalone quality and others don't. And you might remember on my last book haul, I hauled this little individually bound essay by Kate Briggs called Entertaining Ideas, The Long View, which was a reading, an essayistic kind of response to a novel that I'd never heard of. So I thought I'd take the next logical step, and I have now acquired the novel that she's written the essay about, and that is Elizabeth Jane Howard's The Long View. It is a chunkster put out by, as a Picador classic, I think their line is quite sharp looking, and I haven't heard a thing about this. So it's set in 1950s London, introduction by Hilary Mantel, Originally published in 1956, and it's about an, on a happy period in a in a marriage, and I am looking forward to reading this. I think Lee and I might be buddy reading it, and then reading this. Okay, um, the first paragraph is longer than a page. I'm going to read the first several lines of it too because the writing is fabulous. This, then, was the situation. Eight people were to dine that evening in the house at Campton Hill Square. Mrs. Fleming had arranged the party. It was the kind of unoriginal thought expected of her, and she sank obediently to the occasion to celebrate her son's engagement to June Stoker. The guests were asked, at a quarter to eight, for eight. On arrival, the men would be politely wrenched from their overcoats, their hats, umbrellas, evening papers, and any other more personal outdoor effects by the invaluable Dorothy, until, reduced to the uniformity of their dinner jackets, they would be encouraged to ascend the steep curving staircase to the drawing room. The women must climb to Mrs. Fleming's bedroom on the second floor, where she would afterwards find strange powder spilled on her dressing table, mysterious hairs of no color she associated with the heads of her guests caught in her ivory comb, and a composite smell of unremarkable scents. I love that so much! <laughs> okay, I have to read this maybe before the end of the year. I have been raving about the furrowed middle brow imprint of... Dean Street Press, and then I tried one a few weeks ago, and I bailed on it. I didn't like it, but I'm hoping that was just just one one bad egg out of the batch. So I here's another one. Aren't they gorgeous? This one is called Begin Again by Ursula Orings. Is that her real name? Furled Middle Brow is republishing women's fiction of the 1950s, 1940s, think, uh, 1930s, and this one was originally published. In 1936, Ursula Marguerite Dorothea Orange was born in 1909, I think in India, daughter of the Simla, is that in India? The daughter of the Director General of Education in India, Sir Hugh Orange. And this is her first novel. Her daughter is the writer Gillian Tyndall, and I've heard of Gillian Tyndall and I can't say why. She died very young, aged 46 in 1955 after a period of depression and hospitalization. Uh, this novel is uh, about four young women only recently down, I think that means graduated, from Oxford. I hope I get along with it better than the other one, which was 
Anne by Elizabeth Elliot. It, it didn't hold my interest, but uh, look at that cover. Don't you just want to lick it, Adam? There was a book sale at my local bookstore here in Tokyo, and I picked up for a good price James Baldwin's Go Tell It on the Mountain. I have been wanting to read more Baldwin for years, and everybody and their dog on YouTube has been raving about him. I have read... What's the gay one called? Giovanni's Room, 1956. How ridiculous that I blanked on that. I was going to say Jonathan's Room. Um, I read that when I was in my 20s, and about a dozen years ago, I read Another Country, which I absolutely loved. I don't really remember what I thought of Giovanni's Room. It was so long ago. But I picked this one up. And I will be reading it next. Go tell it on the mountain. Which is related to growing up in a religious family, religious community in 1930s Harlem. Opening paragraph. Everyone had always said that John would be a preacher when he grew up, just like his father. It had been said so often that John, without ever thinking about it, had come to believe it himself. Not until the morning of his 14th birthday did he really begin to think about it. And by then... It was already too late. At that same sale, I picked up a copy of Last Orders by Graham Swift. I read this as an ebook uh, last year or late 2017, perhaps. Really loved it. It's a Booker Prize winner, I think. Yeah, 1996 Booker Prize winner. I read it after. Uh, Devouring and Loving Mothering Sunday by Graham Swift, and I loved this one almost as much. And so now, for five bucks or something, I four four dollars, I picked up a paper copy. This is a novel about a group of friends and neighbors uh, that were all centered around Jack Dodds, a butcher in London, and he dies, and then they all. There's a very complicated web of relationships, conflicts, romantic uh, tragedies, romantic breaches, and spitefulness that they're trying to keep at bay long enough to scatter the poor bugger's ashes. I thought it was brilliant. And this was also one that I did on ebook and have been looking for my own copy because I loved it so much. And I went to the used bookstore earlier this year here in Tokyo with Ange from Beyond the Pages. And we were browsing on separate shelves and I had raved about this book to her and she found it and bought it. What? Some friend she is. But I found my own copy the other day. Vivek Shambag's Gatcher Gochar, an Indian novel translated from... The South Indian language Canada, K A N N A D A. Just a short little novella about a family that is splintered by success. I'm reading from the dust jacket in rapidly changing India. It packs such a punch, and I'm hoping that we're going to see more from Vivek Shambag because I thought this was one of my favorite novels from India. Translated from the Canada by Srinath Purur. This is my first acquisition of a Kingsley Amos novel. I have never read him. My friend Electra has talked about Kingsley Amos on my channel before, and she doesn't recommend him very highly. But this is his most famous novel, and I should give it a go, don't you think? Lovely modern classics edition, and the cover illustration is quite memorable. It is about a man who's accidentally fallen into a job at one of Britain's new universities. This was the most interesting thing that I found at that book sale. And it is one of those publishing houses that they reprint copyright-free classics in pretty attractive editions. And I got this for $7. It was probably a $30 book from Echo Library. And it is a collection of short stories by John Galsworthy. The title is Five Tales. And it lists all the five titles of the short stories in the title. So the complete title here is Five Tales. The first and the last, a stoic, the apple tree, the juryman, Indian summer of a foresight. Now, F Galsworthy is most known for the foresight saga, which I read four or five years ago. I absolutely loved it. And so one of these stories is presumably centered on some of those same characters. Maybe they all are, but I haven't been able to stop thinking about the foresight saga since I read it and have always wanted to. 
explore more and actually read more about him too because his life sounded pretty interesting okay it says here that this is a reprint of the 1919 edition of five tales in the 1919 edition the fifth tale was indian summer of a foresight in later collections indian summer became the first section of the second volume of the foresight saga so i will have read that indian summer thing so then in later collections was there a fifth tale? I don't know. I think it was in my mid-year freakout tag that I said that the one new release forthcoming in 2019 that I was excited about was Rowan Hissail Buchanan's second novel. So I have it here. Starling Days. Just was published last month, maybe? Don't, don't really want to know too much about it. No, I, I don't want to know any more about it. So you can look it up on Goodreads if you want to find out about it. I loved her first novel, Harmless Like Me. I thought one half of it was flawed compared to the brilliant other half about the childhood of the protagonist. But I've been so looking forward to what she was going to come out with next. I haven't read it. I will read it to you. Sight on scene, the opening paragraph. She wasn't expecting the bridge to shudder. It was too big for trembling. Cars hissed from New York to New Jersey over its wide back. That August had been hot, 96 degrees Fahrenheit hot. Heat softened the dollar bills and clung to the quarters and dimes that passed from sticky hand to sticky hand. That's lovely. And last but certainly not least, <laughs> here is my copy of the Booker Longlisted Ducks Newbury Report by Lucy Elman. I bought it just so you know don't be accusing me of coveting stuff on prize short lists or long lists i bought it before the long list was announced and i don't know will i ever read it it's a thousand pages i flipped through it and it, i think it's like eight sentences long and i don't like that that's just pretentious but uh, i've been hearing things about it that make me i think eric's reading it right now i think i'll give it a go sometime but because it's only eight sentences, I don't know, can I excerpt it? I'm not reading you the first sentence. It's probably 600 pages. It is about an Ohio housewife trying to bridge the gaps between reality and the torrent of meaningless info that is the United States of America. So, yeah, the cultural critique of it sounds intriguing. Oh, um, I see here the first... Uh, that was exaggerated. I can see from about page 12 on, there's pages with no paragraph breaks and perhaps no periods. But the opening are normal punctuation, normal length sentences and paragraphs. So I'll just read you the first three because the f uh, one, two of them are very short. When you are all sinew, struggle, and solitude, your young, being soft, plump, vulnerable, may remind you of prey. To be woken, biffed in the face by the paw of a sleeping kitten. The damp, furry closeness in the crowded den sometimes gave her an overwarm sensation, akin to nausea or boredom. Snaking her long limbs as far as space permitted, she longed to be out on her winding path, ranging wide in search of deer. In her dreams, she slaughtered whole herds. She sought that first firm clasp on a stag's neck, the swift parting of its hide, her mouth filling at last with what was hot and wet and necessary. For all of life is really recoil and leap, leap and recoil. Oh, that's quite intriguing. That's my book haul. What do you think? Thanks for watching.